Welcome to the Reality Revolution. I'm your host, Brian Scott. Today we have even more channelings from Quo. Quo is a group of higher density beings that channel through LL Research. Check out my playlist for further explanation of Quo. They answer some amazing spiritual questions and there is a lot of powerful guidance in their words. Today we talk about the Violet Ray. In the Law of One, they explain an energy system that uses rays as a description of the energy we intake, such as the red ray for the root chakra, the orange ray for the sacral, the yellow ray for the solar plexus, the green ray for the heart, the blue ray for the throat, the indigo ray for the third eye, and the violet ray for the crown chakra. In the Law of One material, the raw material, Quo explains the powerful energy that comes through the violet ray. This is intelligent infinity at its purest and most intense and refined. Then it moves into the indigo ray, which is intelligent energy. There is a difference between these energies and there is some discussion in the channelings on how we can access this violet ray. We begin with the channeling delivered on October 27th, 2007. The question this evening, Quo, has to do with the indigo and violet rays. The instrument is about to embark upon writing a chapter in her Law of One 101 book concerning the indigo and violet rays. From the raw contact, we have a good deal of information that describes the various qualities of these rays. And the instrument would like to ask you if there are any basic concepts or spiritual principles in relation to these indigo and violet rays about which you could speak that would give her additional insight into these rays as she writes about them. Carla Channeling We are those of Quo. Greetings in the love and in the light of the one infinite creator in whose service we come to you this day. Thank you for calling us to join your circle of seeking. It is our pleasure and our privilege to do so. As always, we would ask that you employ your discrimination as you listen to our thoughts. Some of them will hit the mark and some of them will go far astray from what you need personally. Savor and use those that hit the mark, my friends, and let go of the rest. In this way, we can be assured of not having an undue influence on you, but only being in conversation with equals. You ask this day about the indigo, and the violet rays, or energy centers of the energy body. Indeed, this is a very deep, almost bottomless subject, and we are happy to share our thoughts on this subject. This instrument is in the process of looking for the keys to these two energy centers and that she wishes to retain the detailed discussion of these higher energy centers for another volume of this series that is being written. Therefore, there is the desire to move to the heart of the higher rays and in particular the indigo and the violet rays. The very heart of the function of these two rays has to do with who entities in third density are when they have been able to penetrate the surface of their lives and to move into the essence of their beings. You could consider yourself as a focal point or an interface in this regard. You have a physical body and a physical mind which ground you more or less into the world of the physical third density consensus reality that you enjoy and in which you have your experiences and do your learning. Within you also is the one infinite creator. In every cell of your body, in every vibration of your thoughts lives the one infinite creator. Yet in terms of process, there is that sensation of needing to move from the outer world through the doorway into the inner world. Basically, you as entities are a living doorway, a living gate, an interface so that the one infinite creator in a far less distorted form than you can appreciate with your senses can move in power into your life. Those known as Ra have described this function as being the gateway to intelligent infinity. In order to approach this gateway, much work has already been done, for it is impossible to enter the gateway of Indigo Ray until the entity has gathered the entirety and the wholeness of its integrated self into the heart and has done the work of forgiving and falling in love with this integrated self with its many perceived faults. Therefore, we speak of those seekers who have achieved either by gifts of the spirit or by a process of work in consciousness and the disciplining of 
the personality, the ability to yearn for and desire that essence of the one infinite creator that can be pulled through that gateway and into the energy body which is interpenetrating the physical body, thereby bringing infinity and eternity into a finite environment. The model of this activity is that of what is known in the Buddhist world as Kundalini. You have the infinite love and light of the one creator streaming through the chakra system from the bottom up, feeding it with an infinite supply of light. This is the power and the energy with which you work in getting to know yourself, becoming friends with yourself, and working with all of the various aspects of physical life on earth as you know it. In itself, it is a powerful and infinite energy, and yet as the seeker begins to mature, he begins to have a yearning and a thirst for the immediate impact of divine light. Therefore, as the seeker becomes more aware of the true nature of his desire, he begins to be able to focus that desire and to set an intention to ask for the highest and best. As the seeker does this on a continuing and intensifying basis, that gateway to intelligent infinity becomes clear. As that intensification persists, the gateway opens and the light of inspiration comes through to bless and fructify the fallow and waiting soul. In the end, you might see this expressing as a complete circuit. The bodily energy having to do with incarnation and carefully enclosed within incarnation is as the field that is planted and seeded and sown with this fructifying information-ridden love everlasting that, unlike the energy that streams from the bottom of the energy body upwards, has pointed and articulated information in the silence of that inspiration. The energy coming through from the bottom of the chakras is that energy which is yours to manipulate or distort, shall we say, in the ways that you find helpful, useful, and beautiful. The divine inspiration that you call through the gateway of intelligent infinity is as a massive information-rich fountain that permeates you at the point at which your desire to seek has matched your intention to seek from above, as it were. There is in this process a kind of self-abnegation. There is the realization that the mind does not have enough words, the heart does not have enough tears, and the being that expresses on the conscious level does not have the capacity in and of itself to understand what it is getting through the gateway of intelligent infinity. Consequently, this work is done in a state of unknowing. That state of unknowing is usually achieved within your density only by a process of self-acceptance that can be lengthy. Self, as it expresses in waking consciousness, simply needs to be put to bed or moved away so that the self is empty and waiting. This is exquisitely difficult for most intelligent people to do. They have that unspoken assumption that their minds and their insights are going to be adequate to processing the information that comes through the gateway of intelligent infinity. However, this is not so. What comes forth from this hidden or nonverbal exchange of information is a shadow of the information itself. And yet the process of making that connection through the gateway of intelligent infinity is akin to splitting the atom so that even a shadow of that light illumines magnificently the inner landscape of the one who makes that connection. As you sit in meditation, visualize with us your energy body with its rainbow of colors, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. The indigo and violet rays are at the brow and the crown of the head, the very tip of your physicality. Allow the light and the love of the one infinite creator to flow through the bottoms of your feet, the base of your spine, and up your spine. Feel that energy kissing and moving through each chakra. Feel it pouring out of the top of your head in a fountain of colored light. That is light which is colored by your working with each of the chakra energies to bring them into your own unique balance. You can see that there is a circular spray, shall we say, of radiated light that moves from the top of the head in all directions. Now, allow yourself to feel the essence of your desire. What do you desire? Those ready to work with the gateway to intelligent infinity will be saying something like, I desire to seek the truth. I desire first-hand experience of the one I seek to know in order to serve. And sentiments of that basic nature which ask nothing for the self except to rest with the beloved 
at last, and practice the presence of the One Infinite Creator. As you find that desire, my friends, begin to feel the energy within your third eye vibrate. Feel it come alive. Oh, sacred desire. It is vital to be passionate in your seeking. Then imagine that contact, that moment when that desire is fructified by the inspiration which is focused only for you and adequate in every detail for all that you could ever wish to know or use in order to serve. See your radiation begin to have weight. You are now not simply radiating out into a void, shall we say, or the area around your head. You have become a fountain. As the inspiration flows into that portion of your energy body, it then bursts forth again, but with the weight, so that it is more like water than light in its behavior. It begins streaming in a beautiful, circular, symmetrical fountain and coming back under you to catch up again with the energy of the earth. That love and light that comes into the body from the base of the chakras, you sit in the middle of a torus, shall we say, of created light that is your interface with all that there is. This is the essence of the indigo and the violet rays. Beyond all the techniques of the discipline of the personality, beyond any detail, skill, or technique, there is the one overriding essence of connection between energies that are different in a profound way, energies that, when put together, create of you a true and powerful lighthouse. It is wonderful to be in the presence of an entity with an open heart. That glow, that radiation is so enjoyable to be near. One can always feel the presence of a truly loving heart. There is excellence there of the highest degree. Yet the energy of one who is making contact with intelligent infinity is as the wise man to the youth. The one known as St. Paul said, Now I see through a glass darkly, then I shall see face to face. That is the difference. In both cases, may we ask, who is the I who is radiating? And you shall say to me, it is I myself, it is the person that I am. This is the hardest part to perceive. In the case of the opened heart, there is a simple or simplistic degree of selfhood or ego which is an essential part of the radiating form. For it blesses the light that is radiating forth from your heart. It is a very personal thing although it has great overtones of impersonality as the open heart makes contact with the presence of the Infinite One. Meditation through the gateway of intelligent infinity is impersonal, and so the great work of indigo ray is to move the self very gently out of the way and allow only the essence of desire to express the selfhood of the seeker. We note from the query that the instrument has chosen to speak of these two energy centers together. And while we feel that there are obvious distinctions between the two in form and in function, we would agree with the instrument that this is a sound approach, for the two work so closely together in terms of the function of penetrating the gateway to intelligent infinity that it is not necessary to divide the study. Naturally, it is important in terms of making a report of what this instrument calls confederation principles and thought to distinguish betwixt the two for there is tremendous movement in indigo ray possible whereas in violet ray there is a fixed nature to that energy yet as the two work together they function as that connection to all that there is which can make of a seemingly human entity a magical powerful impersonal servant of the light this may be seen also to have its reflection in sexuality, and we would suggest that it is helpful to discuss sacred sexuality as being a part of the function of these two energy centers. The physical body is a wonderful instrument. We realize that it is a very delicate piece of machinery that is often distorted in various ways and in need of repair, and yet at the same time, your bodies are wonderfully adequate to feel the most intense emotions and to sing the most heartfelt melodies of emotion. In the world of social intercourse, entities use words to connect with each other, and words always are inadequate to convey wholeness because of their very nature. The body, on the other hand, in sexual intercourse, can communicate without words. It can make connections that can be felt or even seen by some entities as circuitry that is connected with the joining of the mated pair. And sexuality, of course, 
goes through all the chakras from red straight up through to violet. Each step along the way enhances sexuality. When the heart is penetrated by two entities who are in love not only with each other, but with the Creator and love itself, there begins to be possible an energy exchange that is most helpful to the mated pair as well as to the world around that mated pair. Again, there is the creation of fountains of energy because of that spark, that atom, that is being split in the orgasm. When sexuality is a sacred, spiritual activity, that tremendous power is communicated with no words being remotely necessary, but the self becoming that powerhouse that just keeps radiating in fountains of articulated light. When the mated pair reaches orgasm, regardless of what chakra from which the orgasm is expressing, it is recapitulating the steady state of the creation. It is experiencing the love of the one infinite creator in a way which it simply cannot deny. It is a wonderfully focusing thing to approach and go through an orgasm. When the mated pair determines to seek indigo and violet ray sexuality, it opens a kind of communication with the divine that is otherwise unknown. What a blessing to have a way without words to experience and tabernacle with the one creator. We have found that many of your people have so many prejudices against sexuality that it is difficult for them to conceive of a truly sacred sexuality. If there is a desire to make sexuality holy, the tendency is for entities to withhold sexuality from themselves except under certain circumstances such as deciding to conceive a child. Yet it is our opinion that the metaphysical nature of sexuality is such that it is one of the most clear-cut and accessible ways to experience the divinity of the self and yet not the self but the consciousness within the self that you are letting free from all masks and deceptions by the investment of sexuality with your attitude of honor and worship. As you deal with the indigo and violet rays, you are dealing more and more with things beyond words with essences, and that is something for which spiritual seekers hunger. The process of moving into indigo and relishing it while you develop your ability to enjoy it is one of the blessings of a spiritually oriented life in our opinion. Those in higher densities also retain sacred sexuality and sacred social intercourse, although not in using the words but in sharing whole concepts with each other and collaborating to form group thoughts. And perhaps what we would leave you with as we leave this subject is the realization that we hope all of you may have that you have the power to collaborate with the infinite creator and with each other at this level. Certainly, sexually speaking, the mated pair collaborates in the most dynamic of all possible ways to practice the presence of infinite love. But as you meet people who are doing the same sort of spiritual work as you, and as you talk about that for which your thirst and hunger, you are creating collaboration through that contact point with intelligent infinity. And you are creating thought forms that then have an independence of existence. You have spoken in this group about the creation of a new paradigm, and certainly this instrument is very focused on that creation of a new paradigm of living and being. Realize when you have a good conversation going between those of spiritual consanguinity, then you are creating changes in consciousness that will outlive the present moment in even your own lifetime. The opportunity for creating this paradigm is just as we have described for sexuality conversation which achieves the penetration of the gateway. It is the thought that is focused when an intention is made to seek and to know this new paradigm, and when it is released into the emptiness of outer form so that it may reach the essence that fructifies your waking everyday consciousness. We would say to the instrument that we feel like she will be fully able to discuss the various techniques of these rays, especially the indigo ray. We do not feel that we need to comment further on those details, and thusly for this particular time, we have offered you what we hope will be helpful at this juncture. We now move to a channeling on September 19th, 2015. The question we'd like to know how to determine where the inner light that is our birthright in the violet ray meets with the intelligent energy from the logos that is our daily gift of energy that comes in from our base chakra 
through our feet and through the groin area, how do we determine where that meeting place is? I am quote, and greet each in the love and light. My friends, we are happy to be with this instrument and this group for it has been what would you would call a while since we have had the pleasure of speaking to this group and it is an honor for us to do so. You asked this day how it is possible for the seeker of truth to determine the level at which the seeking takes place as recorded in your energy centers or chakra system as a means by which to modulate and accelerate the inpouring energy of the logos that moves through the south poles of your energy field in a magnetic fashion and seeks to unite with the birthright which each has in the violet ray chakra the guiding star of the self shall we say each of you as you move through your daily round of activities experiences catalyst in a variety of ways the catalyst is so called because it allows you to glean from these interactions with other selves that which is of value to you in your own journey of seeking there are many such interactions for each seeker in each day's round of activities if you wish to analyze these interactions for their ability to assist your journey of seeking it is well to reserve a portion of each daily period at the end of the day to enter into the meditative state and to examine what has occurred for you in this day in the way of interactions which have moved you away from the compassion and understanding which is the goal of the seeker of truth if you have felt yourself moved in one particular way or another you may look at that movement that has shall we say taken you from your center of self and assign to that movement a certain center of energy which is shall we say the home ground or bastion of that particular kind of energy expenditure at this time we shall transfer this contact to the one known as steve i am known as quo steve channeling i am quo and we speak now through this instrument we would like to begin by thanking this instrument for challenging us in the name of the one creator and along the path of service to others for it is our understanding that there are many voices in the universe it being a universe full of spirits of every description not all of whom are seeking in the way that those of this group are doing that the contact may bear the character that you wish it to have it is important to exercise discrimination at many different levels but most of all with respect to the question of the open heart those who seek with an open heart my friend are those who seek in the way that we do and we are grateful for your seeking for it assists us in providing the kind of service which is our calling to provide the question of energy centers is indeed among the most central for those of third density who wish to engage in that kind of spiritual work which can best be done in meditation the energy centers can be likened to a musical instrument in the sense that the different centers each contribute to the whole by providing a tone one could say that when played well provides a harmonic expression of the spiritual being so while it is true that there is a hierarchical structure to the energy centers it is also true that in a well-tuned being all centers are contributing simultaneously so we would caution against attempting to occupy in your meditations simply the highest of the energy centers that you feel is accessible to you at the expense of the lower energy centers which we would stress do still form an important part of your being and indeed the most basic part of your energy system so if we may begin by looking at the red ray energy center as we have called it which you may find at the base of your spine this is the center at which energy is taken up into the more etheric body and while work of a more individual or particular sort may be done at the red ray level it is yet an important consideration to have this energy center wide open for it gives the entire system the initial fusion infusion we correct this instrument of energy that comes in from below the factors that tend to close off the red ray are those of fear those of excessive anger those of excessive lust such factors as these can so overwhelm the energy system that no further work may meaningfully be done while they prevail so a bright and cheerful attitude towards spiritual work is what we may call the best beginning now with such an attitude in place one may move up the system of energy centers to that ray which we have called the orange and we find that the attitudes that one has toward other selves with whom one has a personal relation are central to this energy center and also the sense of self that one entertains for oneself is a factor of importance for dealing with the intake of energy at this level blockages may occur at this center when difficulties are discovered either in the relation of the self to itself or in the relation of the self to another if these blockages are in place it is well not to attempt to go higher for to do so will mean that one is working with higher energies in a way which is distorted 
at a level below their proper sphere, and it is not possible to correct these imbalances while in the configuration of the higher energy center. Therefore, while for example it may seem highly desirable to the seeker to be doing work in the blue ray or in the indigo ray center in meditation, this work will not be effective until the clearing of the lower energy centers has been achieved. When one feels joy in relation to others of one's immediate acquaintance, when one feels joy in being who one is, one can then make the effort to move higher in the chain of energy centers and undertake work within the yellow ray center of activity. The yellow ray center of activity is that center in which the societal actions can be engaged and every individual within this circle of seeking has a highly articulated societal self and a highly complex set of societal relations that situate the way the energies are configured for each individually. This can constitute a very involved and complicated system of study. It is not that we would suggest that this system of study has to be exhaustively completed at every sitting, but one does well to be clear that one is not carrying the effects of lingering discord at the third, or yellow, energy center before attempting to move higher up the scale, so to speak. The principal effort typical of third density meditative work is the opening of the heart chakra, or the green ray energy center, for only when this center is opened can work in the higher centers be engaged in a way that reflects the polarity we have called service to others. To be sure, there are those within your density that have chosen another polarity, that polarity being what we have called service to self. Those who function in the manner of serving primarily the self are those who disdain the opening of the heart center finding it to be foolish to dwell there. For it seems to those who have chosen this polarity to be such as to give away the authority or the power of one's being. Now it may so seem to one whose sense of self is such that it creates a kind of rotary pattern that moves from the yellow ray center back down to the orange ray, back up through the yellow, and so on and so on. We pause to call your attention to this configuration, not because we feel that any within this circle are in fact polarizing in the direction of service to self. But we do find that the energy pattern typical of that configuration does, to some extent, persist in many, if not all who seek within your density. And so it is well to be aware of that pattern. And it is well to be aware that this is a pattern through which one penetrates to gain access to the opening of the heart center. With the open heart, one gazes for the first time with new eyes upon the creation, with eyes of innocence and joy. It is with this energy that one may begin to make a springboard attempt into the higher energy centers, the danger of which some have become aware of an attempt to open the higher energy centers without a full investiture of the heart center is that one carries a polarity of a different sort than the one desired into these centers. And if the polarity chosen is not fully consistent with itself, an imbalance of significant proportions can be the result. As a consequence of this thought, we would caution that it is always well to work on that work which is given to one to do, and not to judge the meditation as being better or worse based on how high one feels one is reached in the hierarchical arrangement of energies. If one's daily allotment has given to one a disturbance of the orange ray, that is where it is well to focus one's efforts. If the disturbance is of the character one can find in a complicated social arrangement's characteristics of the third ray or yellow ray activity, it is well to focus one's balancing effort in that ray. By doing so, one does the work of creating the pathway to the open heart. Not every meditation, my friends, will be one of glory. Not every meditation will be one of pure joy. But much of the work that is done in meditation sets the table, so to speak, for the feast to come. And we commend you to the activity of doing the work requisite for the more sanctified work as we might call it that begins with the blue ray and moves into the indigo ray which reaches its fuller height the indigo ray is that ray of the spiritual seeker which most embodies the highest aspirations to which that seeker is able to reach the indigo ray is the site of sacred work which one does by invoking the power and presence of the creator a kind of drawing energy if we may so call it, that reaches down from above and constitutes an inspiration and an invitation for the upreach of the energies coming from below. In the indigo ray, there's a great feeling of blessing available. One can become quite intoxicated by this feeling of blessing. 
It is not unknown among your people to have serious spiritual seekers have experiences in which they break through to the indigo ray and feel themselves to be overwhelmed by the splendor of the energy there to be discovered. On such occasions, you do find those who feel they can now sally forth with the message they can uniquely bring to a struggling humanity. But we would suggest to you that when this happens, it is often the case that a precipitous conclusion is drawn to the effect that a message of a particularly limited kind is the truth to be conveyed. And we would suggest that the limitations of the message are often reflective of the particular characteristics of that individual seeker involving work that has been left undone at the lower energy centers. So we would suggest that the question of raising the level of the energy center activation is for the evolving seeker not the only question to be addressed, but rather it is of equal significance and increasing importance to engage in the process of balancing all of the energy centers in relation to one another. This requires continually going back down to the lowest and moving back up to the highest and going back down and moving back up and going back down so that one learns to play that tone poem which is the energy system with more and more skill and more and more clarity and more and more devotion to being the highest and best of the clearest channel for the energies. It is one's privilege to convey through the various expressions of the self. We are those of Quo and we thank this instrument for its willingness to serve and at this time we would pass the contact back to the one known as Jim. Jim Channeling. I am Quo and I am again with this instrument. We thank the one known as Steve for his service in allowing us to speak to the point of this query for this afternoon. Again, my friends, you are the arbiter of your own journey as you survey the energy centers affected by your daily round of activities. Look then to those where blockages are found. Attempt to balance each blockage with its opposite that you may find an evenness of flow where before there was energy that was halted in its movement upwards. And in this fashion, you may determine where your focus of attention needs to be placed. It is the journey of a lifetime to unblock each succeeding center of energy so that the white light of the one creator moves unimpeded through each center of energy and remains white throughout the journey. However, do not feel that you have in any way failed if there is a coloration to your light, for this is why you have incarnated. It is necessary to engage in the learning of various lessons in the overall plan of each soul's evolution. The way lessons are learned is to discover where there is a blockage in the overall energy patterns of each individual and program these into the incarnational life stream that attention might be put upon them and energies directed to balance and clear each center. At this time, we would ask if there's any further query upon this point before we would ask for further questions. We are those of Quo. Question Quo. If the main questioner has no follow-up, I have a question that is relevant to the general question. In session 74 of the Law of One, Ross says the indigo center is indeed most important for the work of the adept. However, it cannot, no matter how crystallized, correct to any extent whatsoever imbalances or blockages in other energy centers. There must needs be cleared seriatim from red upwards. On one level, I understand that you must work from the foundation upward, clearing and balancing each center to create a stable base from which to work in indigo ray. Yet, on the other hand, this notion is confusing to me because it seems like the consciousness of indigo ray is one that undoes the fundamental illusion. It undoes the illusion of separation. It undoes the illusion of the individual I, and it is upon those illusions from which all of the blockages spring in the first place, the blockages of the red ray, orange ray, and so forth. So it seems to me that the indigo ray gets to the root of the problem, so I'm confused as to why the indigo ray cannot then undo the blockages and imbalances of the lower rays. If Quo could speak to that, I would appreciate it. I am Quo and I'm aware of your query, my brother. The point of this response by those of Ra was that no energy center does the working for the seeker. It is the seeker which does the working by utilizing the various qualities of each energy center in order to bring balance to the entire array of energy centers. Thus, the conscious aware seeker utilizes the ability of each center in the process of balancing so that the activities of the day which have pointed out to the seeker where work needs to be done may be then processed through a period and process of balancing in meditation the perceived blockages. It is therefore the seeker that does the work. Question. While this is unrelated, it doesn't have to do with the original topic. 
Years ago, I created a race of extraterrestrial beings in a story I was writing, and years later I've encountered people that I didn't know at all claim to have seen and interacted with these beings in a way that seems very real. I was thinking of how this type of thing in general might pertain to inspiration or possibly just the creation of a thought form, and I'm kind of wondering, would it be better in that type of circumstance to consider the idea of inspiration of information having come through and in related fiction? Or is it possible to create a thought form of that depth to where it can impact complete strangers and how one might care for a thought form like that? I'm not sure if that's a clear question. I am Quo and I believe that we have the gist of your query, my sister. The thought form indeed may be created or it may be perceived. The creation of a thought form is possible by the concentration upon such a form of thought, which is, shall we say, manufactured by the conscious mind or perhaps through inspiration from the subconscious mind, there is the perception of a thought form that has existence in another realm of the density in which you inhabit. Thus, you have two potential sources for this thought form entity that took its places upon the narration and story you have created. The first being, as we said, a creation of your own mind. The second, the perception of your subconscious mind. Is there a further query? How would you go about telling the difference? I am Quo and I'm aware of your query, my sister. We shall pause briefly as we are aware of the recording device having need of attention. I am Quo and we suggest, my sister, that in your meditative state you observe the qualities of the character in your story and observe how in this state of observation the character behaves. If you're able to see without any conscious intervention on your part how the character continues to move and evolve, you may consider it a product of a contact with your subconscious mind which has relayed to you a being which does exist. If there is no movement or development in the meditative state, you may consider the possibility that it is a creature of your conscious mind's creation. Question? Quo, I have a question. My understanding is that this channeling process happens between incarnate third density mind-body-spirit complexes and you whose origin is in the outer planes of fourth density, fifth density, and sixth density. I wonder if the inner planes of this planet play any part in the channeling process, and specifically if the entity who is a friend of ours known as Carla lends her energies to this process in any way. I am Quo, and am aware of your query, my brother. The one known to you as Carla has an affinity for this group, which is most solidly established through her incarnation, which has found its completion and has allowed her to pass into the world of the spirit, the time-space portion of your planet's environment. In this environment, she is able to send her steadying energies into this circle of seeking so that there is a kind of framework or solidity of vibration that aids in the reception of our vibrations, shall we say. In short answer is yes. Is there a further query, my brother? No, thank you, Quo. I am Quo and we thank you, my brother. Is there any other query at this time? I am Quo. And as it appears that we have exhausted the queries for this nonce, we shall say how delighted we have been to be able to speak to this group and to express, we correct this instrument, and to experience the collective energies of seeking of joy and of the sharing of love and light that is within this circle today. The light which you have generated may be seen on the inner realms of this planet as a beacon that shines brightly forth into the time-space portion and alerts all the angelic presences of your song of seeking your expression of joy, and your open hearts of love. We look forward to speaking with you again. Go forth, each of you, in joy, in peace, in love, and in light. We are known to you as those of Quo. Adonai, my friends, Adonai. And this concludes the channelings in specific on the Violet Ray that I am able to find. There is more material on LL Research and in the raw material on the Violet Ray. And it's important to understand the other energy centers to understand the Violet Ray. The Violet Ray, as described by Quo, is quite different than the other energy centers. It changes you. The other ones you can use and manipulate, but the Violet Ray is just intelligent infinity. And that's the big changing point. As we have learned from other channelings and the Law of One material, planets in the galaxy reach a point where they contact intelligent infinity and it completely changes everything, very much like the first time we got the internet or we got electricity. 
There's going to be a point in the future where on a widespread scale, we legitimately contact intelligent infinity in a way that is measurable and obvious. And the world's going to change. This contact with intelligent infinity is happening on a small scale now. And what they're saying is we can contact intelligent infinity through meditation, but it's really important not to ignore those lower energy centers in this process. The key is those lower energy centers deal with specific issues in your life, struggles, routines, emotional patterns. If you get angry or fearful, it's going to block the energies that are coming up. There's issues related to each specifically, how you interact with others, your own personal power and interaction. And then once you get those things cleared up, the heart can open. As they say here, you're not going to really work with those upper energy centers until there's an open heart. It's implied here that the service to self blocks the heart. So what's happening is they're utilizing these higher energy centers, but it's a different energy. And as they say, the pattern is if you have these higher energy centers open, but your heart's closed, then it's a different kind of indigo energy or blue ray energy. We want access to the blue indigo and violet ray energies of the service to others portion with compassion opening from the heart. The heart influences this. Consider it like a soup. Put some salt and pepper in. It's going to change the taste. If you have this soup of energies flowing through your energy body without the heart, it changes everything. So the open heart is the key. Once the heart is opened, it opens up the higher waveforms of these higher energies and we can start to really be of service and understand our relationship to others. We can use the blue ray to have an influence that helps others and the indigo ray to see that other parts of the world and the violet ray to cleanse and purify and contact spirit. It's such a powerful thing. And once you have opened these centers with an open heart, you are like a lighthouse as they describe. We have another episode on becoming the lighthouse. You can become the lighthouse. So miles away, people are going to see your light. Miles away, people are going to be drawn to your flame. You are this powerful being. And I know that many of you are star seeds and wonders that have come here for this particular purpose. I see your light. I see what you have done. You're changing the world. Continue to try to make these connections, balancing your energy centers. As they emphasize, your energy centers have a relationship to each other. The root to the heart, the indigo to the heart. They need to connect and balance with each other. Once you have these balanced flowing energies, you are an unstoppable agent of service and love in this world. They emphasize that you need to take your time doing this, that you can short circuit this energy system. If you blast one out or you get too much energy. So they've always cautioned that you want to take your time with this as these energies move and flow through your body. You get energies from your feet all the time. That's where your energy is primarily from. There is another energy that you can access that comes down from the violet ray. And part of our spiritual journey is learning the difference in these energies, how they connect and how to utilize them. It's still a fascinating topic to me. And I don't know if I've really accessed the violet ray. It is my intention and desire to do so. If it will help me to be of greater service. And also if it will help me to connect to the creator and know the creator, which is my greatest desire. I would love to get your own impressions of this. Have you had your violet ray opened? What it felt like, what you did to do it. Oftentimes in discussions like this, it's important to share personal stories. And sometimes when I ask you guys to do that, I don't see it. But please, in the comments, if you felt like your violet ray was opened, tell me about the experience and how you did it. Other people can read the comments and find out from you and what you share may be most important. You can find all episodes of The Reality Revolution at therealityrevolution.com. And welcome to The Reality Revolution.